okay, first you need to use npm to install the Express Socket I/O and MQTT module. Next, create an app instance by using Express. Create a server by using HTTP dot create server and pass in the app you just uh, initialized. And then create the socket by using socket IO, pass in the server. Set up MQTT client. This, uh, this setup here, you can refer back to MQTT npm menu. Set up the static file path. So uh, in this example, my static files are the headshot image uh, for the uh, people enter the room, like this image. When I go to the home page, the express server will host uh, this HTML front end file. And then set up the MQTT client, which is a event listener. Basically, when the MQTT client successful successfully connected to the MQTT server, uh, the callback function uh, will be triggered, and the MQTT client will subscribe uh, to the topic position. And here is to set up the uh, socket I/O, similar as MQTT client. Uh, when the uh, front end connected uh, to the back end successfully, this callback function will be triggered. The MQTT client will listen for the incoming message, and uh, when it successfully uh, receive the published message, uh, this callback function will be triggered. And uh, I will um, parse the incoming message string to uh, the JSON format saved as uh, data. And the socket will emit an event called uh, local location data with the data I just parsed. And this here is just uh, when uh, my front end disconnected, I just uh, tell myself, okay, yeah, the front end web page uh, got closed. This statement here is to set up the uh, web application port. It's uh, very important. And through here, by using this, you can access your website uh, application. OK, that's basically what uh, backend do. So in summary, it's uh, set up uh, MQTT client uh, to listen for the incoming message and uh, set up uh, the socket I.O. for uh, forwarding the incoming MQTT message to the front end. And then we go to uh, front end. Uh, it's a uh, it's a little bit long, but doable. So I imported the socket I/O and the D3 uh, module uh, in the header tag, and set up uh, the style the CSS style uh, for the hover card and the the circle, like. The location circle.
So when they front end successfully get the back end emitted topic location data. Okay, I gonna call this function, this callback function. This callback function gonna be triggered. The callback function is very important because it contains uh, the radar data like I'm sending here. Okay, this data is this uh, JSON. Okay. And when I receive the, the new data, right? I call this uh, update function. The update function is the key function to construct the location data. For example, create uh, the uh, image here to uh, display the hover card. Yeah. So what it does is it's first check if the uh, image pattern existed or not. If it's not existed, I will create the corresponding uh, image pattern and uh, the person's uh, location dot. And if the uh, image pattern already existed, uh, that might mean the person moved to a new location in the room. So I just uh, update this uh, location dot, uh, like, like this. Right, and it's moving to here. So from the beginning, I set up the SVG viewport and then set up the x, y axis, draw it uh, on the screen, and draw the table, initialize the pattern container for the image view, initialize the uh, location dot containers for the people who are present in the room and uh, set up the hover card. So the hover card, uh, you need to uh, append uh, to the body, uh, not pan the hover card to the inner space. If you pan it into inner space, I believe the hover card won't display and this is the uh, bug that uh, I found out okay for let's see uh, for creating uh, the image pattern so uh, first I need to uh, to bind uh, the coming data to the DOM data placeholder called image and after I binding the data to the placeholder, I set up the image pattern attribute. And this line here, pattern content units object bounding box, it's, uh, it's very important if you don't have this, uh, the image feel into this circle gonna be very weird. Okay, this this took me a very long time to to figure out. And I, I'm gonna 
post uh, the Stack Overflow uh, post, I found a solution how to uh, fill the perfectly fill the image uh, into the circle. Okay. Then next one, create a location dot. Create a location dot. Okay. Same thing. You're gonna uh, bind the data to the DOM a data placeholder called location and after that a pen and a circle okay so okay, well that looks like this okay and set up the location attributes after you set the attributes um, so I did a opacity uh, transition. So you will you will see that the the image the dot here will uh, shows up uh, gradually, and then I create the corresponding hover card to that. Um, person okay that's what you see here and the hover card uh, constructed by three uh, listeners mouse over mouse move and mouse out uh, the mouse over listener is that when you when you move your mouse onto the dot, right, this hover card will gradually shows up and render this HTML context, like right? the things display uh, inside the hover card, and when the mouse move inside this circle okay you can see the hover card also follow the mouse move and that's what this uh, callback function do when you move the mouse out of the circle the hover card will disappear I mean, that's basically what it is doing another important uh, function is this update location dot function as I showed uh, one example before that I update the UGX uh, position this function will do a uh, transition animation and also data update uh, for the position so let's look uh, inside it. So it's first, okay, I first select uh, the corresponding person's location, and then I do the transition first. And then I update the data binding uh, inside this location selection. And that's why I can display the coordinate uh, inside the hover card correctly. And, uh, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Thank you very much. See you next.